Alrighty guys, welcome back to Red Sing with Steve. I bet you weren't expecting this. Uh, back after my extended break, ready to get going into some uh, Red Sing with Steve. Uh, first off, apologies about the slightly raspy voice. I did sort of lose my voice over my extended break. and it's a, It was actually worse a couple of days ago. Uh, but um, hopefully you can put up with it. And uh, this episode, as you can probably tell by the title, is going over comparators and comparator logic i.e. the title, Comparative Logic. Um, it is a bit of a simpler episode, so for you guys that are good at Redstone out there, you could possibly skip it if you really want, but maybe you can look into it, see some designs you may or may not know. Who knows? Hopefully I can uh, at least teach someone something, which is kind of the idea of these episodes. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Alright guys, so for the purpose of this episode, I'm going to assume you at least know how a comparator roughly works, like remotely, like that it can only accept power from the back and maybe you may know it accepts power from the side, but that it can't accept power from the front, it passes redstone through it, you, you know, basic, very basic stuff like that. Um, I'm going to go through all the main functionalities anyway, and as well as some more advanced stuff even though it's not too advanced, it's just um, some neat stuff to do with comparators, I'll say. Just some little things that have picked up here and there. So we're going to start off, and we've got repeaters. So comparators can act more or less as repeaters. And by acting as repeaters, I mean they can act as diodes. So you can power a repeater from just the back. You can power a comparator from the back. It will only pass the red, uh, redstone signal through the back. And the side functions, we'll say for a bit later on, but... It passes redstone through the back, basically. We all know this. Um, now, it will not pass any redstone back through the front. Well, any redstone signal, should I say, not any redstone. Um, so it will completely block any signal coming from the front, hence it acts as a diode. Now, we're going to flick these levers as such. That's... Oh, I hate that. Levers got to be the same direction. Um, we can see that the redstone signal goes to the repeater, I assume almost every one of you is familiar with how repeater works. Uh, it will repeat the signal, set it back, pass through this block, and set it back to 15, and then it will go to the end. Now, what this comparator is technically doing, even though you can't see it in this instance, is it's taking this 15 strength signal, and remember 15 strength is the maximum a redstone signal can be, uh, taking this 15 strength signal, simply passing it through the comparator, not changing it, not adding to it, not subtracting from it, simply unchanging it to this block and so this power will be 15 here and you can see it goes to the end now we do a second test and we'll leave that right there and we'll go like this so you can see we've changed it slightly now we know it doesn't matter what signal we send to a repeater it will output 15 to here it does not matter i can guarantee you that um, but with a comparator as i said it simply passes what signal is here through it so this will be 15, because it's coming directly from the lever, so the next block will be 15. This will be 14, so the comparator will be passing 14 through it, and as we can see, if we go to the end of this, we can see that the last lamp is off where, as it was on before, when we had the one extra power. So that's how your comparator works, pretty simple. Uh, one more thing I want to point out before we move on is that comparators can also pass um, power through blocks. It can power blocks which can then power stuff next to it as such, and it can power um, on top of the block as well. So just another thing to point out, and we will move on. So the next comparator function we have is a fairly famous one also. It's as an item detector. Now we have this hopper here, and we have this comparator pointing straight out from it. And it can be noted that this setup also acts as an item detector, as I'll show in a sec. Now, when we put one single item, oh, I've got five stacks of redstone here. We're going to put one redstone in. We can see, first, that this is powered with a one signal. See one signal there? So, this is just kind of demonstrate that this works if you need it. So, I'll get rid of that now. Um, we've got one item in there. That will, the comparator says, yep, we have an item in the hopper. 
I'm going to send out the minimum possible signal because we have the minimum possible amount of items, i.e. Uh, one item out of a stack of 64. It gets a little different with um, stacks of 16 and unstackable items. It gets the uh, signal strength can vary a bit. You only need to just do a bit of trial and error for that, guys. I really can't give you a list of how much signal each item and how much it stacks gives. So um, basically, it's um, I think it goes on stacks and amount of a stack. So putting one red, putting like eight redstone in is going to give you a different amount than if you put eight enderpearls in. I would say, I'm not exactly sure, but Enderpearls only stacked to 16, Redstone stacked to 64, so they're going to give you a bit of a different signal, but it's all trial and error, guys. Just go figure it out for yourself, I guess. So this gives the one output, and simply when you put more items in, we just get more output. So if we keep putting more and more stuff in, you can see it up in the corner there, whoops, until we've filled up the hopper, and it gives the maximum 15 again, and that's pretty much all you need to know about that. Uh, very, very simple, and I I guess we'll move on now. So these next two functionalities for the comparator are the ones that people often kind of err on, I would say, and ones that people commonly forget how they work and everything like that. So I'm going to go through them now, hopefully, to give you a bit more of an understanding. So we've got our comparator here. It is in its normal mode. I've just placed the comparator. I'll even do that. It's just as it's placed. Now... We know if we flick this switch, it will carry uh, 15, 14, or we'll carry the 14 signal through here. Pretty easy. Wouldn't say there's too much difficult about that. Now, I was talking about the side input before. Now, if we activate the side input, we can see the comparator turns off. No output, nothing. Absolutely no output, as you can see. Turn back on, it's fine. Now, this is because this is the... I will call it a signal detection, or I guess you can see the uh, comparator is acting as a comparator. It is comparing the two signals and outputting depending on what signal is stronger. Now, if you think of the back as the primary input, the absolute primary input, you want the primary input to be the highest input, and then you'll have your output. So if the primary output if the primary input is higher than any other input, the side inputs basically, uh, then you'll get your signal going through. Oh, and this, no, I, I'm slightly wrong. I apologize. If it's higher or the same, you'll get, you'll get an output. If it is lower, you will not get an output. So in this case, we've got a 15, 14 strength signal going to the comparator. And because the side is higher, the primary is lower, no output. Now, if we change these to be the same, signal going through, because these are the same, you still get your primary input uh, going through to your output. So, <coughs> excuse me. So it's pretty simple. If the primary is higher or the same, output. If it's not, no output. Pretty easy. And the reason I've got this here is because I'll just reset it for you guys. This will turn it off, this won't. So you can't, the uh, comparator will not accept power from the side from a block. However, whoop, it will accept power from the back from a block. Bit weird I know, but that's how it works. So I guess we'll move on now. Now this last comparator function here that I'm gonna cover is another one that's fairly often misunderstood, even though it's, again, not too hard to understand, a bit like this one. And actually it works Fairly similar to this one, I would say, except with an additional function. Now, I've got this little sign here. Back minus front equals output. Now, you heard me talking about all this primary input nonsense here. Your back is always your primary input for your comparator. It's always the one that is, is kind of, it's always the primary. So the sides will never be your primary input. It's always your back one that the comparator is dependent on. So if you don't have a back in, if you don't have a back input, you don't have your primary input. There will never, ever, ever be an output, ever. And I'll tell you that now. Um, so you can see we've got here, and we're repeating the signal. Now this comparator is in subtract mode, and as you, many of you are well aware, I think many of you will know that you can get a comparator and just right-click it, and it will go the torture pop-up. That's subtract mode. 
It's the not default mode, basically. Now, what subtract mode does is exactly what it says on the tin. It subtracts. So what we're going to do first, I'm just going to change this back because we've got this setup sort of corner here, and I've set it up the same. So when we did back, and then the side one was, the back was 14, the side was higher at 15, so the primary was lower. The primary lower here, no output. It's not going to give you anything. You can't give a negative number in, in an output. It's not, <laughs> you can't have negative redstone power, unfortunately. So we've got this sign back minus front. We've got 15, 14, so it's 14 minus 15 gives you negative 1, which is just gets rounded to 0. I don't know. Well, you can't have a negative redstone signal. So obviously you're not going to get anything. So we're going to turn this back off. And we're going to turn this one on. Now, this one's a bit different. We have 15, 14 strength going into the back. And when we turn this lever on, we have 15, 14, 13 into the side. Back minus front, 14 minus 13, 1, which passes through this block and gives us our 1 signal strength here. Now, if we extend this by 1 and we go, so this would be 15, 14, 13, 12, you can see we've got the two here, and I'm going to chuck another one in. You can see it doesn't make it to the third one because 14 minus 12 is two. So <laughs> I said that funny. Two. Uh, so you get your two signal strength, and pretty much that's all you need to know. So anything higher again works exactly the same as the non-subtract mode, and weirdly different torches are lit up. I don't know. Okay, so the front torch always says active. That's it's an interesting graphical thing, I guess. <laughs> so um, exactly the same. If the, the side input's high, you're not going to get anything, i.e. if the primary input is lower, nothing. And in this case, if the side input is lower, um, you are going to get a subtracted output. In the other case, you would just get the signal repeated, by the way. In case you're wondering, if the side input is lower, you're just going to get the signal repeated in the default mode. In the subtract mode, it's going to subtract it. So, that's all the primary input functions for the uh, comparator. And now I guess I'll go over some more uh, advanced stuff. So the first more advanced function, I would say, of the comparator is the inverter. And I've put in brackets torch because they are technically the same thing. Now, this is a functionality that I first saw used in actually a previous episode of Red Zone with Steve, which would be episode three, uh, Dico's Doors, Dico, Dico. Daiko, the redstoner. I saw it used there and I thought it was brilliant because it's just, if you use it correctly, it can be a real super space saver in your designs. So if, essentially, we have a normal torch here and of course we know that this is on. When we turn this off, your redstone lamp's going to come on. Pretty simple. All right. What's your point, Steve? We have this. We have a comparator. It's off. That's because... Reds, one redstone here. So when we turn, when if this is off, this is outputting a signal strength of one. When we turn this torch on, this is 15. We know from over there that because the side input is bigger than the primary input, it's going to turn off. Hence, you can use it as a torch. Very, very easy. So both on. When the, the levers are off, when we turn the lever on, redstone lamp goes off. Turn on, red zoom light goes off. And I think this is an incredible thing to use in your designs. And I've already used it in one of my designs that I may release a video of very soon. And I, it's just brilliant. Basically, in, the des, in my design that I'm describing that I'm not going to give away, and it was in a contraption of designing, and I needed to invert one line and not invert the other. And I could not figure out how to do it with, um, w with just a torch. So I thought... I saw this used in um, Daiko's 4x4 door, it was actually. Why don't I try and use it here? And it worked, oh, I tell you, it worked like a charm. I loved it. So uh, this is actually, it's most useful actually with a furnace because furnaces do not react to redstone. And uh, furnaces do count because they're like dispensers. They're like droppers. They can be used for item detection. And I and I've realized I forgot to mention you can use any sort of things that store items to use this for item detections, not just hoppers. So actually I wanted to I want to show you exactly that it does work now. I'm gonna go what's I don't need that. 
and you can see we'll just put one redstone in there and you can see it does indeed give an output so there you go guys hopefully you can use that in your design somewhere maybe who knows and uh, we'll move on to the next design so the next one is something that a lot of people have probably figured out by now and that is as a clock with comparatives you can make the fastest clock in the game currently very very simple <coughs> excuse me if you feed a comparator in subtract mode and it has to be in subtract mode uh, back into itself you can see if we were to turn this torch on it would send a power of 15 it will go 15 to here 14 13 and you can see the primary input is 15 and the side input is 13 so this comparator will say okay I want to output 2 and then it goes 2 1 0 and then it gets back to the next tick and it's saying wait now I've got 15 so basically this comparator will flash between 15 and 0 as you can see this redstone line is totally you, you can't quite see it but this redstone line is constantly going from 13 to 0 power so it will just flicker between that and thus creating a very very fast clock and usually it's used to hook up to a dispenser and if we chuck some redstone in there we can see it dispenses it extremely fast so very very useful and something a lot of you I think a lot of you would know by now but there you go on to the next design now this next design kind of follows on from the clock idea and it is the auto dropper and it's auto droppers have been around for a fair while now and they're not too hard um, the first kind of design is using exactly the same clock and just feeding it into a dispenser or a dropper whatever floats your boat really and it's basically if we take it out we just turn this on and it'll just fire them out very very simple except when it's empty it'll just keep clicking like that and that's horrible to be honest like we can make a better one than that so the better version is actually this version version and this is the smart auto dropper if you want to call it it's a bit like a smart piston it will only fire when needed be so it will only fire when there's an item in it just like a piston will only, a smart piston will only fire when there's a block in front of it very similar concept so what happens is that your hopper just as usual feeds into your dropper or dispenser doesn't matter and once an item is in here this comparator will say yep there is an item in your dispenser or dropper and it will send out a one strength signal this repeater will amplify it to 15 and it will go into this comparator and it actually needs to be on subtract mode almost forgot and this pretty similar setup looks just like this 15 in the back and it would, we know it will continually pulse we've already seen that so it will continually pulse into this repeater and it will fire the item out so we chuck one in we can see it fires out so if we just chuck a bunch of items in they're just going to keep coming out just like that and when it runs out of items to dispense it stops so it's pretty brilliant I would say and this is very very useful if you want to do something like uh, this extremely useful. I think this will work I'm not 100% sure uh, now it's not working I mucked this up again uh, I mucked this up a lot actually <laughs> I, have a, I have a bit of trouble trying to do this I, I, I muck it up too much I'm not very good with this. I, I thought I had this down, but apparently I don't. God damn it. I think it needs to be a... Uh, I've always used droppers, so maybe that's a different thing, though I wouldn't say so. Let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. It's a dropper. So it, the dropper does matter when you're putting it into chests, I believe. So this is the most useful thing for it. You have a hopper feeding in. You can see it just going around like that. You have the uh, hopper just feeding into it and it just keeps dispensing into the chest. Very, very simple and it stops when it's done. So, very, very useful device. Auto dropper improved. I should put smart auto dropper. I think I'll change it. Um, so, very, very nice design. And with that in mind, I think we'll move on to the last design. So, this last design is one of my personal favorites. And it isn't so much a comparative thing as more a hopper thing, but I wanted to show it anyway. And you may have seen my video on it. It is a hopper timer. 
and it is what well, was popularized by Etho. I'm not, I doubt he invented it first, but it was definitely pop popularized by him. What this does is it is times just depending on how many items are in the hover. So we can see the tor the uh, redstone lamp is on. We flick it. We can see the redstone lamp is off, and then after a bit, almost. There it goes, turns back on. And we have comparators in work here, basically detecting if there is an item in either hopper. So we click this, we see that there's items in both hoppers, so they're sending out a signal strength of one to these both of these torches here, so the line is off. And then when all the items are out of this hopper, it'll turn back off, turn this torch back on, and then the red sand lamp turns back on. And I guess it isn't too much comparator based, but I wanted to show it anyway, just for those of you who haven't seen it. I th just think it's a cool design, to be honest. <laughs> so um, I think that's all about it, I have to say. Hopefully this was a bit of a shorter episode, maybe close to 10, 15 minutes than 30, as I usually get. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this, possibly my uh, more simpler episode, I guess. But, um, you know, I don't mind doing the occasional simple episode. Uh, but you know next episode is going to be a doozy, guys. So um, be prepared. And, uh, yeah, any questions at all on anything you see here, post in the comments. I don't care. Even if it's a silly question, I'll answer it. Don't actually care. And uh, hope you enjoyed this one, guys. And I guess I will catch you next episode of Red Sea. Thanks for